Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Robert Burns with Sound Off Louisiana. And what I'm asking to discuss today is what I feel very strongly is a need to clear the air with regard to uh, Lieutenant John Clary having been falsely accused of concealing his body-worn camera during the arrest of Ronald Green. Um, I will be coming out with a sound off feature at approximately 3 o'clock today that will have extensive detail on this, but I have prepared between them a table. I'm going to leave it with Mr. Hanneman, and you're welcome to take the table if you'd like to print it out copies for everybody. But let me just briefly hit the highlights today because I'm not going to infringe on your time. Um, between that arrest and April the 11th, 2021, it is a proven documented fact that a minimum of eight people, and I mean eight people that I can prove with names, watched and or downloaded that video. Nevertheless, on April the 11th of 2021, there was a supplemental report prepared which falsely accused John Clary of having concealed that body-worn camera. As a result of that supplemental report, along with notes that were applicable for the report, which were conveniently leaked to a, main, a very, not some small sound off Louisiana, not to put myself down, uh, but to a major media outlet, namely the Associated Press, that, in turn, resulted in a May 24, 2021 article that was published all over the entire country, lambasting John Clary by name in the subheading, saying that he had concealed his body-worn camera for, quote, almost two years. Now, presumably that article then led to a very public televised appeal on the part of Senator Cleo Fields, where he said that given that this body camera had been concealed like this, and he openly called for the indictment of John Clary for obstruction of justice. Clary, I mean, Clary, uh, you know, obviously was there on the scene. Obviously he had video, and obviously the video was held for a long period of time, and there has to be a reason for that, or it was obstruction of justice and somebody needs to be held accountable for it. Um, and then on March the 22nd of 2022, during testimony of the Ronald Green hearing, the lead investigator of the case, Albert Paxton, said, I first learned of the Clary video on October, or on or around October the 2nd of 2020. Investigation revealed that Clary logged and submitted the videos in evidence.com in accordance with LSP policy. I'm not disputing that at all. So you, you when did you, how did you first become aware of the Clary video? Talking to Scott Davis, um, when all this stuff started happening, um, all the hurricanes and things in 2020, LSPs, uh, um, it was right around the time that there was a recording of Chris Hollingsworth talking on the phone about what they did. His testimony was corroborated shortly thereafter by uh, Sergeant Scott Davis, who was the then LSP's use of force expert. He corroborated that, that he and Paxton had sat down and visited about that, that video in early October of 2020. At what point do you get a meeting with the people you're interested in meeting with about the video? Uh, it was at the very end, right before Colonel Reeves um, left as the superintendent. I think you're talking about talking about Paxton, talking okay. to Paxton. Um, so, yes, I did. I, I spoke to Sergeant Paxton um, about it, and this was after my command staff briefing. Like I said, at the time, back then, um, in 2020, I had no earthly idea who was even investigating it. I was trying to find that out and have a meeting with them, but I, I wasn't ever successful with that. It's just like around October of 2020, probably, if it's around when Colonel Reeves leaves. That, that's just correct? It sounds about right. And so how much long after that did you finally talk to – to, to Paxton. It was very soon thereafter. Okay. I will hand it to then Chairman Tanner McGee, who point blank said to Mr. Paxton, many people have told me you knew all along about the Clary video. Now, I have heard from others um, who have 
insinuated or, 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 or said that you always knew about the Clary body cam video. That you he had an interesting reaction to that. I'll let it go with that um, because I'm not going to infringe on y'all's time. But I will say this. He also testified that then Chief of Staff, Doug Kane, said that he was, he, he didn't believe John Belton, quote, should even consider charges against John Clary. Was your impression of that meeting from what the DA's office was telling They didn't want John Belton to do anything to John Clary. Um, did she give you a reason why? She didn't say. My mom used to always say put a mark on the wall when something rare happened. I'll invoke that phrase now. I could not agree more with Doug Kane's statement in that regard because the evidence is overwhelming that he did not conceal his body-worn camera. Talking and talking more about the Ronald Green, going back and talking about the Ronald Green video or incident, and he mentioned a um, phone call that Clary had with with Peters, and I was like at the scene, and I thought he was. I mean, I was like, well, what? How, how did you hear that? And he said Clary's body camera, and I I told him Clary didn't have body cameras. Said yeah, he did, and so that's when I first became aware of it in April. On April the twenty eighth of twenty twenty two, giving tremendous credit to then Lieutenant Colonel Kenny Van Buren, who said, point blank, and I quote, those who have alleged that John Clary concealed his body-worn camera, quote, nothing could be further from the truth, unquote. Um, my name is Kenny Van Buren. <clears throat> Lots of attention has been given to uh, Lieutenant Clary's uh, body-worn camera video, the fact that he or what's been alleged that he, he hid the video. But I'll submit to you that that isn't even remotely accurate. The video was properly labeled and uploaded to evidence.com. It's a, a video repository on the same morning of Mr. Green's death. And maybe just maybe on our part, Criminal Investigation Division, that maybe we just didn't do a good job at looking for it, but it was there. And I commend Kit, former Lieutenant Colonel Kitty Van Buren for his willingness to put that out there because it's a fact. Nevertheless, shortly thereafter, State Representative De uh, Debbie Billio, Republican Kenner, chose to, to counter Kenny Van Buren's arguments. And she, she put on quite a show. I'm going to stop there. She put on quite a show. Mm -hmm. uh, Lieutenant Colonel Van Buren, I may have been born at night, but I wasn't born last night. So I want to talk about your testimony regarding Albert Paxton. You stated that, I believe, that he logged on to the system in July 2019, correct? That is correct. But he didn't have access to the videos, to watch the videos then, did he? Well, according to the audit trail, that's what it appears. He's, he's in the audit trail. So if he accessed that system, he watched something. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Van Buren, I'm going to stop you, mm -hmm. and, I, and, and, and I'm going to let you have an opportunity to think <laughs> about that answer. There are emails from Albert Paxton requesting repeatedly to be able to have access to watch the videos. He needed, he couldn't search for videos and he couldn't watch videos without being granted access to the videos. Tell me I'm right or tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. I'm wrong. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when did he watch the videos, Lieutenant Clary's video? When did he watch Lieutenant Clary's video? Well, that wouldn't have been until after that that particular video was identified. But that does not mean that he didn't have access. Ma'am, what I'm telling you is that he had access, he was given access, and if he didn't have access, he could have certainly requested access, and we can show that he was in the system. And you, you're telling me he could log on and he could search for Lieutenant Clary's video? He could have. It could have. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And and if I tell you there's emails to the contrary where he's requesting the ability to access the videos, you're going to tell me it, they don't exist. Ma'am, the only thing that I can tell you is I'm looking at an audit trail with his name on it. I just want to say this. I investigated thoroughly every claim that she made, and I mean thoroughly, and I can just tell you they are completely without merit. There'll be further elaboration. You'll see it either in the table or on the piece. 
and I'm almost, I'm almost wrapping up, Mr. Chairman, because I'm, I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to overstate my time. Um, so despite all of this, despite all of this being aired in a very public setting, John Clary manages to get indicted on December the 15th of 2022. I don't know how something like that happens. I mean, I, I, I really don't. And, you know, one of the reasons I'm going to say there wasn't a lot of fair, fair, fanfare when John Clary was reinstated is because of the sound off piece that I published on November the 22nd that kind of laid the foundation for this, that those charges had no merit. So I think that's one of the reasons you didn't see any major backlash when John Clary was reinstated. But um, the, the only last thing I'm going to say. is that there was then an Associated Press article that in my opinion gave a very misleading headline. Because it, it still tilts toward pointing the finger of guilt toward John Clary. It says that a uh, lieutenant who was alleged to have concealed his body-worn camera is reinstated with state police. Well, technically that's, that's a true headline. But I believe it needs to have the word falsely in front of the cues. He was falsely accused. So what I'm doing in appearing before you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate the Commission's time, I am actively calling both on the Commission as well as newly appointed Colonel Robert Hodges and R to launch an investigation into what happened in April and May of 2021 that triggered all of this. Because I believe it's necessary to clear the air over how something like this can happen. Because the problem is, those newspaper articles that went out all over the country, they not only falsely gave John Clary a bad name, they give all the state police a bad name when you, when you have that kind of a falsity being spread on that kind of a wide of a forum. So I believe that the public needs to be enlightened on just what happened here. I believe the Green family needs to be enlightened on just what happened here. And, and, and I think in helping to restore credibility to state police, which has suffered badly over the years, that's a given. We can all stipulate to that. So I would call upon this commission and or Colonel Hodges to launch an investigation to what happened during April and May of 2021 to result in a full-blown indictment of, a, of, a, of somebody that it should have been painfully obvious, painfully, that he did not do this and he was not guilty. And that's the reason that John Belton had to drop the charges because that became very, very apparent. I don't know how an indictment got obtained, but it did. So thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank all of you for giving me this opportunity today. With that, I'm, I'm done with my, my commentary. Thank you so much.